be careful of who you're listening to in this hour. You have people who um, hold new age philosophies and you don't even know it because they try to be very slick um, in just coming out and saying what it is that they stand for. But if you really listen closely, you can clearly pay attention because out of the mouth flows the abundance of the heart. And so when I never hear somebody say the name of Jesus ever, I never hear them glorify God. I'm looking at you with the side eye because what exactly are you bringing to me? What exactly are you bringing to me? Especially if you're saying that this is a prophetic word and I don't hear a testimony of Christ nowhere when the spirit of prophecy the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Or the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. I don't understand how, and if you want to know where I got that from, that is that comes from Revelation. I believe it's chapter 19, verse 10. How is it that people are coming to you with a prophetic message? Christ is nowhere to be involved. You want to know why? Because a lot of the messages are vain anyway. They're vain. The messages are vain. Um, but I want to warn you guys of some language that you should automatically, automatically put under, mark them as those who you just should not listen to. There are people that the Lord rem made very clear. I don't want you to receive from this person. And I kept trying to receive from them. Why? Because these were people that I were that I was watching when I first got saved. And um, you know, there's even a particular person that I used to watch that because of hearing of her hearing her testimony led me to repentance. But the thing that I, I, you have to pay attention to this stuff, y'all. She in she when I came across her video, the video was unlisted. Why would you unlist such a powerful testimony? Why would you unlist it so people can't even find it? And then when I look back, she was teaching doctr doctrines of devils then. When I look back, she was teaching doctrines of devils then. And what do I mean by that? Mixing scripture with new age philosophy. Stuff like teaching Matthew 6 and 22 to mean that he was discussing and talking about the third eye when that's not what he was doing. He, was, he wasn't doing that. He wasn't teaching that. And so, excuse me, y'all. I didn't mean to look, <laughs> to look like that. I come, I try to come to remote places when I get the chance to film certain videos when I'm at work. And I be knowing where, you know, there shouldn't be any activity. There shouldn't be no people. But for whatever reason, if I'm recording a video, it doesn't matter. Somebody gonna pop up somewhere. Unless I am in the prayer room. But I wanted to be somewhere else today. Anyway. um, Yeah, her video ended up, it was unlisted when I came across it. And at the time, I'm not thinking anything about it because I don't know anything about this discernment. I don't know anything about any of that because I was just hearing a testimony and I was in a space where God was calling me to him to know him through Christ. And so it wasn't until months down the line that I realized, wait a minute, her testimony was unlisted. And then secondly, she was teaching about third eye being in Matthew 6 and 22. So she was still holding a new age belief and reading the Bible through tainted eyes. So you must not have the Holy Spirit. Um, You just came in, into the knowledge, but you didn't come into the spirit of God. And so, um, yeah. And then... It just made so much sense why the Lord was pulling me further and further away from receiving messages from this person. Um, and I've gone back to, you know, look and see what their videos are looking like. And I don't hear Jesus mention ever, you know, where she was saying, yeah, she was. She don't even say that. And so it's just letting me know that people are. Um, 
people have gotten off and got off quickly. And people, this is the thing too, people who used to be in the occult, it's worse because the enemy, especially to what to whatever degree, depending on the degree that you were in it, the enemy is going to constantly bombard you. He's he's gonna attack your mind the most because he's after your he he wants to get in here because when he can change your mind he can change your heart and he wants us to believe the lies that he has told us for for many of us it's like no i'm not going back there because i already know the truth i you have been exposed enemy you've been exposed and so there's no way i'm going to receive anything that you have brought to me in the past as truth there is no way i'm going to do that and so um, the, the warfare is going to be really high. Some people just don't endure that warfare. And the thing is, it's, it's a lot of these highly intellectual folk that the devil gets this way. And he makes them think, well, um, this is the Bible. It's not the only place that truth can be found. You know, this worked for you before. So that, why do you think that it, he will really get people like that and people don't understand that he operates in the business of false signs and lying wonders people don't understand that he operates in the business of deception when he came to eve and he was like oh you won't surely die he just knows that you will be like gods not understanding that eve and adam were already one with god walking in the cool of the day with him already living in eternal life it wasn't until they sinned that their years that they had to experience death yes they got to live to almost a thousand years old but now they now you eventually someday you're going to die now because you have sinned and now brought death into the world and and that's the thing that people are not understanding that satan operates in the in the business of deception and false signs and lying wonders so even if you do go find one of these occulty books, it might have some little truth in there. It might tell you to do this and do that and it might work for you. He gave you some truth, sprinkled with some lies, gave you a, a sign of synchronicity to make it look like it's working. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and not, to, not, not even just that, but there is, I mean, obviously... The, this worldly philosophy, these worldly philosophies, these scientific wonders, right, that people come across do have some truth to them because when you're working with energetic whatever, you're going to see something move. You're going to see something shake, regardless of what source you're plugged into. And I've talked about this before. And what people don't understand is when he spoke in Matthew 6 and 22, if the light, if the, if the light of you be darkness, how great is that darkness? You're plugged into a source. It's just darkness. The light that you're plugged into be darkness. Then there's a source of light, but it's dim. It's not the light, which is Jesus Christ. This is why he, when he said the I be single, see, people are thinking he's talking about your third eye. He's talking about when your eyes are on what is pure, what is light, which is Jesus Christ, you are filled with light. If your eyes are on, peeled on something dark, first of all, you're now double-minded concerning the things of God. You're double-minded. That's what's going, that's what's happening with a lot of these folk. But anyway, we're going to keep going forward. Pay attention to people speaking in, in what is the word I'm looking for? Justifying new age beliefs with scripture. Pay attention to people who refer to the Bible as a religious text. Pay attention to people who write off the Bible when they're supposed, if you're supposed to be a believer. Oh, also pay attention to this. People who it's almost offensive to consider them a Christian. Now, in the book of Acts, and I forget the exact chapter, you guys, but there is a chapter. It might be Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Um, it says that in Antioch, believers were called Christians first. So a, a, a person who follows Christ, that's what a Christian is. 
that's what it's supposed to be. There are a lot of people out there who put the title on themselves and they do not follow the teachings of Christ. They don't even care to walk in a way that is reflective of, of their confession. I get that. But what does that have to do with you and your personal relationship with God? The I, I'm telling you right now, the only reason why people don't want to identify with Christ is because they have not yet made a true commitment. They haven't made a true commitment. They think it's optional. They think the Bible is optional. <laughs> that you don't have to listen to everything in the Bible. You can twist and contort it. It can shape, shift, and form to your lifestyle, to your philosophy, to your ideologies. They don't want to be referred to as Christians. Red flag. Red flag. They use all of these universal terms. Divine. Divine feminine. Divine masculine. They karma. They use that word karma a lot. Um, and then we have some Christians that are just, you know, immature in their faith and they use that word and they're used to using it because it's a worldly term. So they still using it. But um, karma, which is a Hindu philosophy, mind you, that there's a whole philosophy. This is why we need to be careful when we're using words. Anyway, um, I'm trying to think of some other words that I hear. If you hear chakras ever mentioned, no. Um, just all of these justifications for doctrines of devils. Okay. Um, it's a no. It's a no. You really need to be careful of who you're listening to in this hour because people are trying to conceal themselves. They're tr they know that the things that they believe are controversial in the body of Christ. They want you to receive, they want to receive, they want you to receive from them. They want you to be locked into what they have to say. They want you to listen to them and receive from them, be encouraged by them and be inspired by them. But they don't want you to know the source in which they're coming to you from. That's the sneakiness. That's the deception. Because they know if they was flat out honest with what they truly believe, which they will never reveal, this is why you have to listen to what they say. Because out of the heart flows the, out of the mouth flows the abundance of the heart. If Jesus is, if Jesus is in their heart, they're going to talk about him. They won't talk about him. They won't acknowledge him. That's because he's not in their heart. That's because he's not in their heart. So they're not going to discuss him. They're not going to talk about him. They're not going to bring his name up. This is why you have people, the same people that make a big deal about using the name of Jesus. And they want to, that's fine if you want to say Yeshua. It's fine if you want to say Yehoshua, whatever, whatever. But eventually they, it gets to a point where you don't hear them say his name at all. At first it was about, I want to say his Hebrew name. Then you don't hear him, hear them saying his name at all. Because there is something about the name Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Demons tremble at that name. And I remember in the beginning of my walk, I was making a big deal out of trivial things like that. But I'm telling you something right now. I've seen demons flee out of my life by using the name Yeshua, Yehoshua HaMashiach. I've seen them flee out of my life because of using his name, just Jesus. And I'm going to tell you why that is. Because his spirit is with me. If his spirit ain't with you, it don't matter if you say it in Chinese nothing's gonna move <laughs> nothing's gonna move if you're holding on to doctrines of devils and so listen if you're not calling on his name with a sincere heart with a heart in desperate need of him ain't nothing gonna move and so you'll hear people not even saying his name at all at some point because He's not in their heart. He's not their heart's meditation. He's not their heart's meditation. That's why you don't hear these people speak his name. Yet they constantly are coming before you with a prophetic word, but they can't even speak the name of Jesus when he is the spirit of prophecy. And so I'm going to leave that where it's at. Really be careful of what you, who you are receiving from and what you're receiving. Because every time you touch and agree with these Jezebels, if I'm going to be quite frank with you, that call themselves prophetesses, 
that say that they are a prophetic voice, every time you touch and agree with them and you receive from them, you're eating the spiritual food that they are lifting up in honor of some other God. It's not Jesus. The power that they're even getting that word from, the table that they're even eating from is not the table of Jesus Christ. And now you're partaking of this, of this spiritual food sacrifice to idols. And that just reminded me of this dream that I had, and I'm going to share that another time. My God. But anyways, I'm going to leave this where it's at. Until next time, y'all. Y'all willing. Peace.